So thank you for coming to this session. I'm going to talk about merging maps. I'm going to give you a brief intro into what merging maps is. And then I'm going to go through what are the things that we changed in merging maps this year. Um, this talk is quite special to me because Slovak University of Technology is my university that I graduated. So it's, it's good to be here and presenting merging maps. I'd like to know a little bit about you. Can you please raise your hand if you ever heard about merging maps before? Okay, thank you. And how about how many of you have already used merging maps, so like try the mobile app? Okay, great, thank you very much. So, to start with, so what is merging maps? Merging maps is an open source um, field data collection tool that's built on QGIS. With merging maps, you can take your QGIS projects and you can upload them to merging maps to use them in your mobile phone to record geospatial field data. With merging maps, you can collaborate um, with your colleagues. So all of you can go into field and collect data there. Our one-click synchronization, so when you hit synchronize on the mobile app, is what our customers love a lot about merging maps, which is a simple click, you get your data to the server safely, and you can then export them back in QGIS. Our mobile app is built on QGIS, as uh, somebody shared yesterday, we stand on the shoulders of giants. So that's the same for, for merging maps. What this means is that we are actually using QGIS in the mobile app to render the map. This means that all your um, layers, both background and vector layers, your styling, your symbology, your formulas are all um, shown in the mobile app. And for forms, you can set up anything, um, like most, most of the things that you can set up in QGIS will be available in the, um, in the mobile app. This includes everything from text and numbers, dates, um, checkboxes, to more complicated things like relations, skip logic, or default values. We um, do data versioning, so each time you push changes to a project, we create a new version. What this is good about is that you can go back in time and you can see who did which change and what they changed at, at certain point. Um, our mobile app works offline and can be connected to external GNSS devices to get a better uh, accuracy. One of our main differentiator in our mobile app is the user interface. As Peter mentioned yesterday, our mobile app is used by non-GIS savvy people. So for example, tractor drivers in Africa are using this with just a limited knowledge and can be using Merge Maps mobile app. Um, in Merging Maps, you basically need only one person who knows how to use QGIS to prepare the project, and then everybody else can get quickly up and running with the mobile app. Um, it's not only the mobile app. In our web application, if you go to mergingmaps.com, you can uh, manage your collaborators. You can uh, see the history of your project and explore the pro project online. In order to get your QGIS project to Merging Maps, you need to download Merging Maps QGIS plugin. Almost everything that we do is open source, and you can explore our source code in github.com slash Merging Maps. More than 600 companies are currently using Merging Maps for effective uh, field collection, field data collection. Our customers come from a wide variety of segments from public service to ecology, um, construction, optic fibers, utilities, and so on. Uh, also multiple universities, including this one, are teaching merging maps to their students. And we also offer special plans for students and NGOs to help them with their minimal or non-budget. Um, just a heads up, right after this talk, after coffee break, we have a workshop. And we are going to be exploring merge maps in more details. If you'd like to know more about it, we are going to do a survey together. We will go outside with the mobile app. We're going to capture some data. Um, it's going to be fun. So uh, you are all welcomed. So don't worry, even if you wouldn't have a chair, it's OK, because we would go outside. Now let's jump to what we were busy with this year. Um, this year, 
we continued in our commitment to simplicity and efficiency of the system. And one of the most important things that we did this year is the complete system redesign, and that's what I'm going to start with. So our user interface was rebuilt from zero, and with that, we were able to fix some important user experience issues um, and to bring unified visual in our products. This is a completion of our project where we two years ago merged two distinct products, the mobile app, which, which was called Input, and the server, which was called Merging, into one product and unified also visually. Um, although I say that we completely redone the visual, our goal was to keep the user experience similar to what it was before, so that you do not need to relearn whole, uh, the app from scratch and how to use it. So I'll go through the most important changes here. The first one, oops, okay, I'm gonna go here. So the first one, this is the second one. So you see the old interface on the, is this working? Uh, on the left side and the new interface on the right side. Um, what we heard from our customers is that uh, buttons that you use often, like some of them were in this more menu and it required additional click to get there. So we moved this um, layers button to the main toolbar that you can see here. We also moved the GPS button on the map to align it with other mapping software. And we moved this GPS accuracy button to the left to free this space that is used a lot if you use the mobile, app, mobile with just one hand. Uh, our forms went through uh, changes as well. Um, some important ones are that uh, images are now taking the full width of the form and we unified value maps and value relations into one drawer that's uh, easier to navigate and gives better user experience. We also moved the split geometry and redraw geometry, which are features that where you can remove an existing uh, geometry of an existing feature and start from scratch, start, start drawing it from scratch, from advanced menu here to to the map when you edit geometry. Another thing with the streaming mode. Now we had streaming mode for some time. Streaming mode is a special recording mode where you don't need to move crosshair in order to record new points, but you can just walk around a feature and you can capture lines or polygons. And previously it was kind of unintentionally hidden and now we moved it uh, easier, made it easier to start. So previously it would work by long pressing the GPS button, and now um, there is a special special button for that, and if it is running, then you get the nice um, information about that. Um, you can change, in the streaming mode, you can choose the criteria when we add a new points. It's either time elapsed or distance traveled. For Preview panel for features. This is something that you set up with the map tip expression in QGIS. Um, and we updated it so that the values can take a full width again uh, of the window. And this is, of course, just see it works example. You don't want to show unique UIDs and nonsense data like this in your project. Our dashboard also underwent, undergo, um, or went through a massive, massive change. Um, one of the biggest mm, pains probably uh, beforehand was the management of collaborators. And now we unified a bunch of things. So the first one is in your workspace members section. The, there were three distinct tables for members, guests, and invitations. And we merged all of the three um, tables into one to make it easier to navigate. We, we um, upgraded the sharing dialogs so that it less requires much less clicking. And also in the project settings, where you see the people who have direct access to the project. Previously, you would see only people who you explicitly shared the project with. And now you see everyone in the workspace. So even those who have implicit um, access to the project because of their workspace role. We also added a help center it's on the top right corner here, where you can easily access documentation, contact our support, or um, 
was the third one. Yeah, uh, join our Slack community. Um, if you'd like to know more about the redesign, there is a blog post about it written. So you just go to mergemaps.com slash blog and you can read more. We also have a YouTube video that goes through all of these changes. Another big addition to merging maps this year is editor permission. Now, we heard from, from you that um, previously we had only writer permission and anyone who could contribute to the project could easily log into QGIS and break things up by messing up with layers, removing layers, removing geo packages, or changing schema, like adding new fields, removing fields of geo packages. This would lead to conflicts, and now you could always just go back in time by logging to dashboard and downloading previous version. But this is, it takes a bit of time, and then if you have uh, multiple collaborators, it can have some consequences. And so we added a new type of permission, excuse me, uh, called editor. What this means is that if you assign someone to be an editor, what they can do is that they can still add, update, and remove features. But what they cannot do is that they cannot update QGIS project file, which means they cannot mess with uh, forms, uh, like the structure of the forms. They cannot change layers. Um, they cannot also remove geo packages. And they cannot do schema changes in geo packages. This means they cannot remove fields or add new fields, because that would lead to conflict. This is suitable for anyone who contributes data to your projects, for example, surveyors. Um, this thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy about this one. Um, I think it was one year ago where we launched map overviews. So you can explore your QGIS projects on the dashboard. You don't need to have QGIS nor the mobile app. You can just log into mergemaps.com and you can see your projects online. Now, in the last couple of months, we invested quite a lot of effort in making this more robust and uh, faster performing. And we, I think we are very, or I know that we are very soon um, from announcing it out of beta. And you always get the latest project version. So this is great that you don't need to um, download anything special. You just log into your Merge Maps account, and you can see what's the state of the project at the moment. You see your vector data there. Two more updates to the mobile app. One thing that also was uh, a usability issue was previously was that if you had features on the very same place, let's say point features on the very same place, you could always uh, identify only one. And now if you long press on a specific place, like on the GIF here, you do long press on a field and then you get uh, on a place and then you get a drawer with all the features around that place and you can choose which one you want to identify. You will see um, layer name and also geometry type in the drawer. Next addition to the mobile app is that you are now able to open PDF or any other packaged files within your project. This means that you can open schemas or detailed documents, audio or video files that are packaged in your project. And what you need to do is that you need to use either HTML widget or multiline text editor with the HTML uh, flag and just put an HTML link in this form. Uh, so it's project and path to the file within the project and then you'll see a link inside the form and the link opens the file with the native opener or native application on your mobile phone. And so this is, these were kind of the big things that we worked on in this year. There are, there are much more things that we, we did, but I would like to now uh, show you what we are just about to release. Oops. And that's measurement tools. So we are currently in the testing phase of measurement tools. What this allows you is to measure uh, distance and area around your points and um, help you manage your work better. So what you would do is that you would go to the more menu, hit measure, and then you would get this interface. 
where you can measure distances. It reflects your QGIS distance units. So you can use uh, whichever units, nothing miles if you wish. Um, and you can close shape also to not only measure line, but measure area. I'd like to invite all of you if you'd like to help us shape the future of Merging Maps. We have a wishlist portal that's available in wishlist.mergingmaps.com where you can uh, vote on ideas from our community, what should be added to Merging Maps, and also submit your own ideas if you miss anything in Merging Maps. And you can also see what we are working on and also what we released recently on the changelog here. If you just click on the changelog or visit wishlist.mergingmaps.com slash changelog, you'll see all the things that we have released. Um, one announcement that's all, that was already mentioned, we have a new book written by Kurt and our uh, colleague Alexandra uh, about Merging Maps. And there is a book launch at, at 3 p.m and our booth over here. So I invite everyone to come and celebrate with us. I'll give time for pictures. So that's great. So we covered system redesign, editor permission, map overviews, and selection from multiple features and measurement tools. And um, I invite everyone to come to our workshop that starts at 11 a.m and I'm happy to connect with anyone on LinkedIn. So thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer any questions. Please raise your hand if you have a question and I'll bring the mic over to you. Uh, great presentation, thank you very much. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first, uh, with the streaming mode, uh, can it run on the background? Or does the merging maps have to be really open as, a, as an app? Mm -hmm. So if you want to kind of track on background, that's a different feature, it's called tracking, and we have that. And this, uh, you need to enable it in the QGIS plugin so you enable tracking for the project, and then uh, in the mobile app, you hit, uh, you open the tracking menu, you start the tracking, and then it tracks on background as well. But it stores it in a specified layer for that. Okay, thanks. And second question, uh, you talked about versioning. I wanted to ask how many versions do you store, or is it the number of versions, or is it time-based? We store all versions. All versions. Okay, so if you want to, you have to delete versions if you don't want them stored. You cannot manipulate versions, but you can download previous versions and re-upload it back if you want. Okay, thank you very much. And one, th one thing that our customers are using if they uh, want to somehow get rid of the history is that they transfer the project, which means that they clone it, and we clone it without history, so you only get the latest version. Other questions for Tomas? I have one. The, uh, the new online map, does that support the symbology in your QGIS Merge and Maps project? It does. We are using QGIS servers for that. Okay. But there are some limitations to, to what we can show, so we will not render uh, your network layers. So for example, if you have a connection to, I don't know, Google Maps, then we replace it with our tiles instead so that we do not wait for the network and the maps are better responding. But yeah, you can use, so all their symbology is preserved and um, yeah. <laughs> okay, any other questions on merging maps for Tomas? No? Okay. Would my colleagues like to add something? Did I miss anything? <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, Tomas. Thank you.